Everywhere I go, my reservations are always wrong. They're always under the... It's either STP. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the uh, August 23rd, 2017 meeting of the Scarborough Town Ordinance Committee. Uh, present are Councilors St. Clair, Rowan, and myself, uh, Donovan. Um, first order of business is... Sure. Uh, do we have minutes? No, so we, the only order of business today is signs. Correct. So uh, uh, if anyone in the audience wishes to speak, we'll give them an opportunity, but don't feel uh, obligated. We've been talking about signs for five months. Yeah. Well, maybe six. Longer than we thought. <laughs> Go right ahead. Sue Hamill, uh, Three Day Street. Um, I found out about this meeting at five minutes of four today. It was not on the town calendar. Um, uh, it wasn't, I, I mean, I check pretty, um, pretty often, and um, someone alerted me to this meeting being, yeah, at 5 or 4, I got an email saying, meeting on the ordinance committee is today. And I quick looked, and um, I just, I, I'm disappointed uh, that there, there wasn't more notice. I guess um, if I had known that, say, the Ordinance Committee meets every third Thursday or something, then I and had that memorized, I'd know that. But um, I don't know what the meeting schedule is. It just seems like I was planning on coming to the Communications Roundtable tonight at 6 o'clock. And uh, but I'm, I came now because this is important. So mm -hmm. I'm, uh, as far as the, the sign ordinance, the changes that are being made. I know that you're going to be talking about some some uh, additional am amendments to what had been proposed, um, but I still I still feel very strongly that the signs, you know, as rudimentary a, a form of communication as it is, it is still very important and and very effective when it comes to um, talk, talking to the public. Um, and I think that the restrictions, especially um, going all the way down the Pine Point Road, except for a little section by Bailey's Restaurant. That's crazy. Um, and there's a couple of openings on the Black Point Road where you're going to allow signs. I'm not that familiar with Black Point Road, but I, I did Google it, and I mean Google and look to see where the openings are. It's just far too extensive. Um, and uh, I mean, as far as the uh, the definition of the word similar, hopefully that's one of the things you're going to address today. Um, I I think that uh, having an engaged community that um, makes themselves aware of what the issues are, and maybe it's things you don't agree with, but I know the public safety building is going to be coming up. They're going to want to put signs up. I mean, we constantly have issues, and um, and signs are important. And the restrictions are so uh, so restrictive that I, I think that it's really um, it's something that I, I just don't want to see. So thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Good. Well, uh, let's take up uh, uh, the first uh, of the sign issues. Uh, we have two setbacks. We have uh, a 50-foot setback from several busy corners, and we have a 528 feet of spacing between signs. Uh, let's take the 50 foot up first. Uh, it's applicable to eight intersections for which we received uh, testimony by Chief Moulton that it would definitely promote public safety. Uh, and uh, we also had data that showed that they were the highest uh, accident rate intersections in the community out of the hundreds and hundreds that we have. And those are the ones we limited it to. Uh, on the other hand, we've also heard <clears throat> from a number of people that uh, the busiest intersections are also the ones that maybe are the most popular uh, because they have the most traffic. Uh, and that, therefore, they have a more heightened importance uh, on the issue of free speech, which I think we all agree is important. So uh, 
throw it out to both of you. Where, where do, you've heard all of the testimony, the people speak. Uh, you've been batting this around for months. So I think that um, that the public safety um, component of this makes it makes it sensible. I think what we what we don't have and what we couldn't have because of the, the small sample sizes is, is definitive evidence that um, signs are causing distractions and therefore distractions are causing uh, increased accidents. Um, um, it is that is a problem and it's one that actually we can't solve. Right, we wouldn't be able to. So, um, but I do think that. Um, that it 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 feels not overly burdensome to say that with these eight intersections, if there's some number of feet, um, I don't necessarily know. Fifty seems somewhat arbitrary. It might be that maybe we could um, approach an alignment more aligned with the the state regulation of 30 feet. Or, um, uh, but I, I was going to bring that up actually in in reference to the to the next issue. Um, uh, but I do think that that of the um, of the issues that we're trying to solve between um, the intersection setback, the um, sign proliferation in terms of the space between um, similar identical signs, and the um, uh, the, the scenic vista, um, I think that this is probably the most defensible um, and the one that I'm most in support of. Okay, how about you? So, I personally, I think the only one that we really can defend is the scenic vista without infringing on the right. On, I mean, I think if you if we limit them to any other places, we're going to start running into freedom of speech. Cut and dry. Well, cer me. well certainly, uh, we whenever you restrict signs mm -hmm. in the right of way, you're limiting free speech. Right. We look for the justification in the uh, marsh as both a scenic vista and an archaeological protection. Right. So uh, as opposed to public safety, which is really not, we're not trying to make a public safety argument. Nope. Uh, we're, uh, we are, as you enter the busiest intersections in the community that have the highest accident rates. Right. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 it's no big secret. I mean, I don't like signs. I mean, I've said that from the very beginning. I think I've been pretty clear about it. But um, the feedback has been a resounding, I'm wrong, which is totally fine. I mean, that's, that's fine. So um, whereas I need to vote for what I think is best for this town, I need to listen to its residents. Uh, in this aspect, I think. I mean, it's not about, you know, my personal distaste for how they look and what it does. And, um, you know, the only one that I really, I, I am not going to pull back on is, you know, the marsh area and things like that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I just... It's and we've terrible. really had virtually no uh, speakers right. to speak uh, against. Uh, certainly the Scarborough Marsh as it's presented on Route 1, uh, uh, I, the only per, uh, uh, only testimony we've had to the contrary really is that too much of Pine Point Road uh, has been taken up with. Right. And so I, I'd be happy to look at that, to look at Pine Point Road again so as to make sure that when when we did this originally, we we tried to find a start and an end point mm -hmm. for large segments where Black Point and Pine Point went past the Scarborough Marsh. Right. Exactly. Uh, right. Yes. It it feels like maybe we should just revisit what's on Pine Point Road. Um, but I was going to. So yeah, I think we're in agreement to yeah. to look at that, and and that's been a point that's been raised by uh, speakers. Mm -hmm in the past mm -hmm. that it, it's overreaching mm -hmm. and we should, we, and while we're doing that, we might as well look at Black Point Road too. Right. And, uh, just to make sure that we haven't, we haven't missed anything. Right. And I think, you know, anytime we're changing these ordinances, it, uh, keep, keep it simple. 
as simple as we can keep it mm -hmm. um, for people. I don't. I, I know a lot of times we'll change we change ordinances and people aren't even aware of it. Um, and especially when it comes to and I know we you know, we can't limit things to political signs, but speaking on political signs or even real estate signs, a lot of people that aren't are new to it or new to the business don't even know that there are standards for that type mm -hmm. of stuff. I would have had no idea. So I think as basic without ruining what we're looking for is the best avenue to go. Okay. Um, I just don't want to see it get too convoluted. And then, you know, we've had a couple of people say, you know, am I going to be out there with a measuring tape? Right. And, and the, the fewer places that we seek to impose this limitation, mm -hmm. the simpler it becomes. Right. Uh, and the more evident the appropriateness of it. Right. Uh, if there are smaller segments that we've carved out because they're there, but they're small, uh, and potentially I, as I drove Black Point Road today, uh, I was noting some of the sections, mm. and in some respects, it's virtually impossible to put a sign. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. the guardrail is on yeah. the curb. That's true. Uh, and I'm thinking about uh, as you head towards Black Point uh, Surf Shop. Right. Just shy of there. I agree. Between the, so we can, why don't we, why don't we look, so why don't we, as far as that, let's look at those. Mm -hmm. Uh, and revisit it, and we'll be able to uh, draw a consensus on whatever changes those are uh, between now and the next the meeting. Yeah. On second ruling. Uh, how about um, when when you look at the public safety aspect? I thought Chief Bolton made a good case for it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it that we have? too much a distance, 50 versus, say, 30, or is it that we have got too many intersections and that we should limit ourselves to maybe four or five intersections that have the highest accident rates? Though uh, Both of those are a, a way of avoiding being uh, overreaching. Yeah, I don't feel like the difference between five and eight is so material that that would mean that we avoided an overreach. I think it's really just a matter of is the public safety a valid concern for um, for restricting the signs in those intersections? Um, and and then to your point about the number of feet, I think that that if we change our standard in the uh, to match up with the state in terms of how close they can be placed, then we should use one standard. If we're going to say 30 feet, let's keep it consistent. Uh, but I don't think that if we're going to keep it at a tenth of a mile, that we should say a tenth of a mile from those intersections, because I do think that would be overly restrictive. So uh, is there any sense that 30 feet is a more appropriate measure for uh, what the goal of public safety at these eight intersections? So again, I, w I would say de dependent on what we do with the second um, step, and maybe we should do that. Well, let's first. move on yeah. to that one then. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, second dimensional uh, standard was that we have a 528 foot spacing. Uh, that was applicable to signs that were the same or similar. And we had several people, uh, including members of the planning board and members of, P uh, members of the public who are present here today, uh, saying that you get into a morass of confusion and interpretation when you try to say similar signs. And go ahead, try your, take your best shot at defining that and, and you'll find how difficult it is. So what's your sense about the uh, 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 striking mm -hmm. similar? I think it, it should, I think we should go with identical because that, that is easily defined and no confusion. Mm -hmm. think yeah, strike similar, I agree. Strike I similar. agree, I think that uh, uh, in uh, putting a dimensional distance separating signs, they're the same sign. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll see if there's an interpretation problem with that. Right. Once we let the sign ordinance have a period to, to work. Right. And if it turns out there's something that we're missing, fine. But so, so then you say, uh, uh, 
the argument for 528 feet is because when you're going down the road, uh, we rough calculations, you see them at 35 to 40 miles an hour about every eight seconds. And that seemed like a lot of signs repeating themselves. <clears throat> uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the state has set a standard of 30 feet. So we seem to be pretty far apart vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the state. Uh, and, I, and I think here where we're, where we're really talking about an aesthetic um, I think this is kind of where we're on the shakiest <coughs> ground, and, and to like go above the state standard, I think we're, we're we might be um, uh, potentially accused of overreach on on that step without because one person's aesthetic is not necessarily another. Right. And I, I guess I was confused because I, I was I was always under the impression or always told that state federal state Trump state state Trump local, you know, like no matter what. Doesn't matter what we put in an ordinance, state always trumps it. I believe the state regulation in this case only applies to certain roads, and so therefore we were talking about all. Okay. Um, so roads. that's that would be the. And the general rule of thumb is we can be more restrictive than state or federal law. <coughs> and I I think what what happens here is that it becomes a home rule issue, mm -hmm. and if the legislature says you can, mm -hmm. you can, mm -hmm. because they and as I understand in reaching out to attorney. Here, mm -hmm. he said the state has a statutory provision mm -hmm. that says the town can set more restrictive provisions uh, and that they apply not to just the local elections but also to state and federal elections. Got it. So, okay. Tom, is that? I, that's a fair uh, synopsis of his uh, opinion. I, I think it, we are begging for some challenge uh, mm -hmm. for statewide offices and referenda questions to have a different standard here will be a challenge. We may be quite successful in educating local issues and candidates what our local standards are, but you've got folks coming in from away, working on campaigns, and it's <coughs> going to be a, a bit of a challenge when we, in that regard. From an education or even just for the educational and, and yeah. enforcement. Yeah. Or even just local candidates who cover Scarborough, Gorm and Buxton. Gorm and you know, so So is there is there a different dimension than five twenty eight, a lesser dimension that, that I guess I, I would propose that we align with the state and we say thirty feet. Um and maybe that that's sufficient. I, I don't I I'm not sure that that will necessarily make a material difference from what we've seen in past years, but it's at least something that we could build on. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Good. Let's let's do that. It, to me, it's a starting point. Yeah. We're we're putting a stake in the ground. <coughs> the uh, the sign issue will uh, uh, be not going away. People will feel strongly on both sides. Right. Uh, and so, as a starting point. Let's uh, let's agree that we'll make a recommendation of an amendment uh, of 30 feet. Okay. Uh, and strike similar and mm -hmm. replace it with identical. Does that align with? I, I'm not just familiar with the state statute, but um, yeah. I think your partner don't have that. But uh, it, se it seems to me it makes <coughs> sense to me to strike <coughs> similar and, and, and change and, it to identical. Right. So uh, what we'll do is we'll ask for the assistance of the town manager and staff, the assistant town manager, to uh, draft uh, amendments that will be circulated amongst all seven councilors, and we'll, uh, we'll have those available so that people can look at them and look at the actual language. So the intent would be to align with the state standard, right. whatever yes. that language is, and right. the dimension of 30 feet. Right. Now, although, I, yeah, I, I guess I see the problem with trying to enforce the similar as being too vague, um, though. So if it does read similar, maybe we would consider being less restrictive and saying identical. Okay, we'll take a look at that. Yeah, I guess it, so I'll throw that, throw that out. So uh, where do we end up with the 50-foot um, setback for the eight intersections? Right, so okay. I would say if we're going to have a dimension, let's, let's keep 30, it consistent. 30 feet. Yeah. How do you feel about that, Kate? I don't think it should be more. Um, you know, I just, I, I think about the intersections and I wonder how, like, 
I mean, the intersections aren't that big. <coughs> you know, the one, some of the ones we're, ta we're talking about. But if you go back, I mean, some of them, it's, you're going to push it right out. It's not going to be able to go there. Well, the, the most popular spot for uh, any temporary sign at an intersection is at the corner, <laughs> the very corner. So if we push them back 30 feet, I think that's actually not a bad Are start. we getting, I mean, on those corners, though, are we getting into, like, private property? So well, you know, think of it this, this way. That's probably three car lengths. Right. This is within the right of way only. Yeah. So we're not we're not dealing with private property. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. I know, but I just I, I would make the point that uh, or throw this out is is that if we if we were to consider just not restricting an intersections and seeing public safety is not the concern uh -huh. that realistically that means you could only have one sign in the intersection, identical sign. And one of the problems right now is that you had so many signs right. at his intersection. So maybe it might even be an improvement just to have our 30 feet restriction right. um, regardless of how of the identical signs being close. So it might be um, from a That's practical true. standpoint, you would cut down on the number of signs in an intersection mm -hmm. just by saying they have to be spaced every right. 30 feet. Um, That's true. I'm trying to recall, this past election was the first time the state's 30-foot yeah. separation was in place, yeah. right? In November. Mm -hmm. So I know we were successful in getting them to respect that setback um, in the kind of long stretches. It was very noticeable yeah. right at 30 feet. But it does seem to me that we still had uh, a concentration at intersections in spite of oh. that. Oh, yeah. Yep, I would agree. Yeah, I don't think there was any. I, I would say that in November there were lots in the, and that we they weren't 30 feet apart yeah. at intersections. So that part of the state regulation was not enforced? Well, area? I think it would have been, I think it was just, th uh, there were so many. I think it was probably, it just wasn't enforced. I don't know that, I didn't hear any enforcement of the state regulation. Um. Hmm. It's bothering me. But, I, mean, I think, but I, I do think there's value to, to, to saying these eight intersections, they're high, they're accident prone. Um, if this can cut down on on intersection, I think that that, given that it's that it's not a severe limitation, because up you know 31 feet, you can have your sign out there. It's eight intersections, um, and presumably at all four approaches, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think all of these are four-way intersections. That's correct, because all of them would have more than. 30 feet from each other. Yep. I think 30 feet is not a bad standard. Uh, and I mean, I, I, you, you've got two, for I, sure. I, so I, you're 30, so I, don't know, I could sit here and have it all all day. I would be happy with having <laughs> a 30 foot setback from the intersection. And it, you, that's all you're going to get anyway, you're going to get one side. Right. And it's 30 feet back from the corner. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I think the, uh, uh, in here we had uh, an amendment to clarify that it is from edge of pavement. And mm -hmm. uh, the town planner uh, said that he would provide us with some language that made clear because these, when you talk about edge of pavement, you're talking usually a curve mm -hmm. at the corner. Right. And he would be able to provide us with that language. Right. Perfect. Okay. Yep. The next issue was that we have uh, a three-week limit for placing temporary signs in the right-of-way uh, at one time before they had to be removed. Right. Most signs don't last much longer than that. <laughs> Unless you put a lot of money into them, and most people can't, so um, I don't ha I don't have an issue with that, to be honest. I really don't. I, and I, I do think that we got some clarification from the town attorney yeah. that that aligns with the state as well. They had yeah. two, three-week periods. 
Yeah, the, the state is six weeks for the calendar year. Mm -hmm. So, and you have two political seasons. You have a uh, primary. primary season in June, and you have a election season in November. Uh, so, it looks like we're pretty much uh, in, uh, in tempo with the state's regulation. Theirs is just six weeks per year. And you can divide, divide them up any way you want. Hmm. How about the issue of reoccurring local elections? Right. Oh, that, uh, that's coming up after this. So well, doesn't it apply in this case, too? It does. I mean, theoretically, you could have a dozen in, in a year. Or yeah. anything suggested. But, uh, Jesus, Tom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, actually, let's, let's drop down to... Uh, uh, the uh, next issue, which is that we presently have in the draft, in the first uh, reading uh, of the ordinance, a six-week interim period between posting uh, the signs. And, it, and it's none of us thought about the referendum right. aspect, but the referendum needs to allow people to put signs up every two or three weeks. Right. So that seems like uh, a pretty easy uh, change to say, going from uh, a six-week interim period to a one-week interim period. One week, then they have to be removed because they're temporary. But they can go right back up because you're going to have another vote in two or three weeks, three or four weeks. Yeah, it's usually the timing, so... Yeah, state law requires in this instance uh, that that next election be held no sooner than 10 days, no more than 45. So right. you could probably have a two-week period and not in friends. But right. I'm not sure if it makes but sense. But see, I don't. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when I when I thought about cute. and and put out to the sort of the pro and the con argument that maybe one week was was good was it, you got to remove them, <laughs> but but uh, after a week they can go back up. Right and you're going to be allowed to have them up for three weeks. Right. Right. Yeah, I'd be very comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Fine. But that sort of takes care of those, and we already took care of the next one, which was similar. Mm -hmm. um, I might suggest you, you take up the thing you just jumped over, which was the three... The, uh, three-week limit. Three-week limit. Or yes, okay. calendar limit, whatever that ends up being. And we had a six-week. Remind me what what would the ordinance uh, proposed change says, though. What you what I'm, we I'm what, what what currently? I, I think. What we currently have. No, what what in what the we draft want? in the, what we're proposing in the first reading. Mm -hmm. I thought it was three weeks. So three weeks in a row, but then we had a we had a limit on the, the yeah. amount for the entire year. I don't oh. know, six weeks or. That's um, right. Larissa, do you remember? Uh, I think it's in the current format of the case. It was six weeks total calendar. Okay, three weeks at a time, six weeks in between. Six weeks. Six total. weeks total. So that would be something that would, you know, so period of so. Process. That that pretty that much. Three, six, and six. Temporary signs in the right of way are permitted for a period not to exceed twelve weeks. Okay, Tempor huh? yeah, temporary signs in the right of way are permitted for a period not to exceed twelve weeks in a calendar year. So we're already. I mean, the the state is saying you've got six weeks. Yeah, so we're already above that. The twelve is already above that. Okay, mm. and I I was I I thought that uh, Phil Sautier's email in that referenced a statute. I did not read the statute, but I had my doubts when I when I did read it that they that it may have been six consecutive weeks. Then, in any event, the proposal as it stands is twelve twelve weeks in a, in a calendar year, mm -hmm. which would provide for a, a primary and a general. Mm -hmm. And then additional 
special elections should you have them. So I think the point uh, about uh, we're all in agreement that uh, when it says uh, three consecutive weeks and uh, not less than six weeks between the end of one sign display time period and the beginning of another, we're prepared to change that to one week. Right. Uh, the, and 12 weeks seems to be... Adequate. Yeah, I'm fine with keeping right. it at 12. Yeah. Fine. So now the question is, do we lengthen the three-week period? The argument for is, for keeping it the way it is, is the temporary sign. If you want a permanent side, go go get a permanent side permit. Right. Uh, the argument against or for lengthening it is that the most, when you have a content neutral ordinance, you have to look at all of the circumstances, not just that a church supper. They say, fine, we only need it for one, two, three days. Right. But uh, a political campaign needs it for at least three weeks. Mm -hmm. And they'd probably argue four or five weeks. So that's really, I think, the, the point of discussion is what's a reasonable period of time for temporary signs considering all the circumstances, and in this case, political signs. Don't we, doesn't our current political sign ordinance that will be need to be repealed, but doesn't that specify 20 days before an election when it's only a local election? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we would be, you know, it's in keeping. The three weeks is very much in keeping. Right. And it's also in keeping with if you assume the state says you can have six weeks for the entire year, that they're dividing it up three in the primary season and three weeks in the uh, uh, November season. The only potential fly in the ointment there would be, I believe, absentee ballots or early voting can start as soon as 45 days prior to the election. So presumably candidates or ballot questions, you would want your advertising out in time to affect those voters being cast or those ballots being cast early. So uh, 45 days is what? Six weeks? Six weeks. Yeah. I know. I'm, uh, I, I think you have to take account of every situation. And when you look at the absentee balloting, I think people have a right to know what the message is from various candidates. And street signs are so. State political signs, six weeks, so. Yeah, we, we are very consistently over half of ballot cast now, and I don't expect it will change. It will only grow, I suspect, or done early, not yep. on election day. So that's increasingly a big deal. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't have a great reason to say that we have to have it at three. I mean, it seems somewhat arbitrary to me. We could say up to, we can keep it, you know, keep our keep our 12 week calendar limit, right. and you then give discretion in terms of how you want to split that up. I, I'm I'm convinced by the early voting argument that you you cannot restrict because that's really the only people who would have signs up for a six-week period of time. Uh, but it's a necessary part of our democracy is to be able to get the me your message out. And signs are a very, become a very prevalent means of messaging. So I think six is really, I'm, I'm becoming convinced. So essentially what you'll get out of this is less signs but up for longer. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to call my I'm not, after I'm not sure. I, uh, I, I think for the purposes of this discussion, I think we can ask Tom to draft something that says six. Yep. With knowing that this will get fully debated. Yeah. Uh, you know, on that note, with since there are have been so many changes to this, can we push this back to first reading? Well, you instead of going to the second reading at the next reading, so that there's adequate time to vet this. 
You can. The consequence of the delay is that uh, you, these regulations are not likely to be in place for this upcoming mm -hmm. general election, which is fine. I just want to make you aware that's the consequence of a further delay. Uh, the ordinance. Uh, now, what you can do is you can have the discussion mm -hmm. and then table it to the next meeting. Yeah. Because that gives everyone the opportunity. So uh, you're not starting. Right. In other words, you're not starting over. You're not right. going back to first reading, public hearing. And then, <laughs> exactly. right. So, so we we can because I do think all seven members of the town council are going to want to understand all the implications of this. Yeah, and I just want to. I mean, I know that was why you did this in the first place, but I want to make sure the public is aware of the changes that were made because. The initial res because of the initial yes. response we got, I want to make sure that the changes that have been made are also made public. Absolutely. Procedurally, yeah. the way that would work is a member of council or the chair could on his own volition, but a, a, any member of council could raise the question, and the council chair is then obligated to make a ruling, and that ruling is based on uh, whether it's a substantive change. Of course, that can be subjective, um, and the chair's ruling could be overruled by a majority council. So uh, I think Mr. Donovan's point is well taken, though. A tabling motion would effectively do the same so long as, and I would encourage you to allow discussion to occur. Exactly. So you can get to a, a different point as opposed to tabling it uh, and then just taking it two weeks later and not really advancing the conversation. No, no, I agree. That, yeah, I that was the whole point of it was that I wanted to make sure that there was council discussion. Because that would allow us to... Uh, when, when there's kind of a clearer direction as to what actually is going to be voted on. And we'd have the two meetings in September right. to bring it to a conclusion. Yep. What's been through public hearing? I think so that's you're, a good you're ready, Yeah, a final vote is all that's required at this point. That's correct. But yeah, right. You could do it by the end of September, yes. Good. All right. All right. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, uh, Kate. I think that was a worth worthy part of the discussion. Uh, all right, that takes us through uh, to the next issue is the six-month limit on private property temporary size. Before we move on, can I just get clarity on where we landed? So we, we were landing toward changing to the six weeks. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, again, the uh, uh, the question has been uh, raised by members of the public. Why do you care uh, if you uh, have a sign, a temporary sign up there longer than six months? And I think that the, the argument that has been made is if you're going to have a, temp a sign up there for longer than six months, it should be permanent. It's a permanent sign. Yeah. It's become uh, semi permanent. <laughs> At, at that point, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, and there's no restriction uh, on a person applying for a permanent sign. Right. Uh, I thought there was a definition around the type of sign. Didn't we say that, that the temporary signs were the wire frame signs? But no, that isn't that no. how we define it. Right. Right. Gotcha. Right. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. so there would be a. So there would be a. You would need a permit then for a permanent sign. Right. And and the permanent sign provisions of our sign ordinance, which we did not touch. Right. Uh, uh, they're not freely granted. I mean, people do not, you know, get to put big signs out there mm -hmm. that uh, are. You know, fixed in place. So, uh, the the suggestion that I had made, just so the public will be aware of it, uh, is that we can either lengthen the time, which is obvious, we can make it longer than six months, uh, uh, or we could say that they have to be removed for, again, a relatively limited period of time, so that people don't just sort of leave them there indifferently. It's like the person next door who leaves their Christmas lights on till the 4th of July. Yeah. You know, it's that kind I of... I mean, it happens. <laughs> yeah, it does happen. Saying. Uh, but that's the kind of, you know... So uh, <laughs> it may be that just a short removal period... So if somebody wants to put it back up, they can do it. 
I would I would I would not be happy with anything more than 30 days because I don't think I personally think a short if you're allowing them to have it for six months up and then you just give them a short removal time then they're beating the system of well, getting a permanent it's, sign right, it's, in it's, place you're I mean, it essentially seems, creating a permanent sign right. status so if we say oh you you could continue right. it down for seven days you're absolutely right. Oh, I'll go take my sign down for yeah. seven days and put it right back up again. Right. And really, number one, somebody's got to catch them in those seven days, yeah. and who's really watching that? Hmm. You know. So it just seems to me like there's got to be some sort of like this is this is one I'm, that bugs me. Um, if we're going to go with the six month limit, I think it, there's got to be if we're going to put in in there um, a removal period, I, I would not. You I will not it. vote for anything. Less than 30 days. Right. So sure that. Yeah. Right. That what about the practical challenges of for sale signs? Six months. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to give. I don't want to hurt anybody's business or anything like that. But if your house has been on the market for more than six months, maybe it's time to switch it up. It is. Mm-hmm. Yes. Then you can change realtors. Yep. I mean, the fact I mean, is. Sure. Looking at all these different programs right now, probably you know, seven months, seven months, and those are understandably different. Yep. Right. But markets change. I mean, the the only example we can think of where it's legitimately appropriate to have a sign a temporary sign out for longer than six months is uh, a property that just hasn't sold right uh, we can't carve that out because we can't be content specific that's right uh, and I don't think it's fair to uh, to Real estate situations where they just go seven or eight months. That's what. That's yeah, life. Yeah. I mean, some people. So. I think I I agree with Kate that. Um, a longer than that, a week. Longer than a week. Uh, I think thirty days is appropriate. Otherwise, you're really getting into a permanent sign status, and you know maybe. You know. And, and nothing is preventing, you know, an, an application for a permanent sign permit if you get into four or five months and you, no prospect on selling that house. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the quite what the, quite quite honestly the process is. Because you always say, well, how would if you were a real estate broker and you wanted to be able to promote the sale of that house, how would you solve the problem in this instance? And what you do is you put a temporary sign out there for three weeks. That's right. In the right of way. That's right. And, and then after three weeks, you take that down because that's the limit of it. Right. And then you'd put the other one back up. Right. That's my point. I think I think real estate agents are are smart enough that they will find a way if yeah, they need I to, if they really need to sell that house, that they will find a way to get around this. But yet, I think this is strong enough to. I think a 30-day rule sounds right because I think it'll. It, there are ways. To still advertise the sale of that house, yes, uh, right in front of the property, yes. Uh, and I and I know of, I yep. know of people yep. that I, that are in neighborhoods that are next to people that have for sale signs next to their house for six eight months, and it irritates them to no end because they're like, right. I'm sick of seeing that sign there. Yeah. So yeah, I know. All right, uh, then that's uh, Tom. Is right. that? Yep. The next one uh, we already dealt with, which was uh, uh, the edge of pavement, uh, is about the only on the ground thing where this will be a 30 foot setback. We'll allow our town planner to help us with language, and town manager will work with him to come up with a draft that takes care of that one. The next one is uh, repealing the political sign ordinance. This is an administrative right. step that needs to be taken because it is content not content neutral uh, and as I learned today the state has passed 
uh, a, uh, a provision that eliminated their political sign provision and replaced it with the content neutral one. And I, did, I was not aware of that. There you go. Uh, and we have lastly uh, the uh, uh, content neutral correction for electronic signs. This was something that our town planner identified as one more instance where we had an industry specific standard right. and all others were doing something else. And he has arrived at language that I think will uh, allow that to work. So Good. Perfect. Good. Nice. That covers the list. Very good. That All was, right. That was that good work. Nice good. job, people. Uh, I think I have it all. Um, I collaborate with Tracy and, and Larissa. We'll put um, yet another draft together and we'll circulate it first for your review and blessing and then we'll circulate it. Uh, anyone wishing to, to wrap up? We're, we're ready to conclude, but if you have any comments or further suggestions, happy to give you another minute. And, and the plan in terms of the, the map, essentially the, the roads that we were going to define and we'll where. We're going we're gonna to circulate yeah. that with the plan for that. Yeah, we'll, uh, we, I will uh, send something to both of you uh, that uh, makes uh, uh, an assessment of what what, it, what those two roadways are showing for um, problematic, right. you know, that they're mer trying to merge into neighborhoods or it's too limited a space or it's on a curve anyways and is, is not subject to the risk, and I'll make a recommendation. Okay. And you'll look right. at, you can look at a Google map. Yep. Good. Fine. Great. Great. Other comment? Yes, please. Yeah, Thank you, Sue. Sue Hamill, 3 Bay Street. I had, when you were talking about the real estate signs, um, in the old ordinance there was a special section dealing with construction signs, mm -hmm. construction site signs, and, and I was thinking that that's a pretty common place thing that you'd expect, for instance, when they start building the public safety building, the, the firm will want to put a big sign up with mm -hmm. their name, and they may have an entrance, a separate entrance for, you know, to drop off um, materials, uh, so that was one thing. And I did do a little bit of research about trap signs in um, at at major intersections, and and there is a United States um, Sign Council, and they had um, they've done uh, or looked at research that's been done by various organizations, not necessarily the sign you know wedded to the sign industry but their finding is that there is there's it's, you cannot tie um, you know political temporary political signs to any increase in accident rates in intersections um, for the duration of the you know it's there is no study that shows <coughs> that they're that they are a hazard create a hazard um, in the roadway so uh, it's just another another argument um, for not restricting them other than, you know, I mean, the number of signs. Yeah. Was, was that an, an article that you found? I mean, I, I think if you yeah, sent that was, around, I'd, I'd love to. Yeah. It was, uh, it was just a basic article about, um, so you've been appointed to your town sign ordinance committee, and they kind of give you, um, this is what you really need to know, and cool. they summarize the, the literature. Yeah, so could you, could you I will that? do that. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. That's awesome. uh, and the construction sign comment is a good comment because there is the one other instance in which people have uh, their construction signs up for an extended period of time. Right. Uh, on the other hand, that's advertising yeah. as opposed to the realtor is trying to sell the house on which the sign is located. Right. And so I sort of see a difference there because you're just you're just really hey I'm a good builder and I'm building this house right so yes one more Larry Hartwell nine period and drive um, I think it's been a very good discussion today uh, from where I sit it sounds like you have heard concerns that have been brought up at the planning board in the public hearing and in the first reading and uh, taking those into considerations and made some uh, very good adjustments to it 
I want to thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, further comment? Seeing none, uh, motion to so adjourn. So moved. Second. In favor? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for being so efficient.